Cup, but he's made a couple. Well, that's our top six. Kokoro Fuji will come out first uh, because he qualified last, whereas Paul Schempf will come out last because he qualified first, if that makes sense to you. So it's done in the opposite order. Well, let's have a look at it. Starts off on those green tabs, one limb on each. You've got to run and jump to start with. There is a jib on the right-hand side, just underneath the starting holds. There's a big press and then a jump into a pocket. Potential heel hook from that pocket on the pink volume before going up towards those pinches or slopers, however you want to call them, but dual techs on both sides and then finishing with the top, which you have to match with both hands in control. Koro straight on once again. Look at the tension required to hold that. Got that right toe hook looks like a great method to come into the match. I'm going to set you up before the jump. And they were expecting apparently 12 tops on that last boulder, for example. They only got a few, so very, very difficult round. Now he's changing the... Oh, no, he's not. He comes into the toe now. Drops to the sloper. And he's only got 21 seconds left. This will be our last try for the world. So, onto the toe, trusting the rubber. 11 seconds, he just want to get the zone, there and that's go. much better. But he's not going to have enough time to complete the boulder, and he does come down. <laughs> and as you said, never even been in the semi-final before today. Yeah, I believe his, his best result before this was 31st, so he, he will be very happy to be in this final. The Kokoro seven attempts to get that. Let's see what Hannes can do. He's on attempt number five, and that was close. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this move. Not only is he uh, doing it with two hands, he's bumping it in midair. This will be his last try here. And he comes down, oh, he's, he's oh. running back on. I mean, he'll know from the semi-final how important the zones are. Yeah, absolutely. If he can make that work, and he does. And he does make it work. He's wow. got a wow. Really good shot at this first bit. He'll probably try a similar method to Hannes. Yeah, kicking that leg, and that was really close on the first attempt. Let's see what Mejdi can do here. Well, he very gets nice. It. Yeah, very good. He's looking strong this year. A little bit inconsistent at times last year. It's something he's been working on and, and just... Again, he gets it. So he's got a foot on, pops up, gets the foot back on, and almost like a bicycle underneath, figuring it out slowly. And something I noticed in the semi finals was he's one of those climbers where every go he improves a little bit until he gets it. You know? There we go, now gets the foot in the pocket. 25 seconds to top this thing out. He's gonna to wanna to either cross or get his hand somehow on the other one, or just Dynamic jump. finish here. Oh, and the top from yes. Mejdi. gets it, done. With lot I know not many people can say that about the World Cup, so, so it'll be very interesting to see what he does here. Same method as Kuforo here with the toe hook. Load through that move. He'll know that Mejdi topped this as well, and he'll be looking to match that performance. But this is a bit awkward. He's trying to work the feet higher up the big volume. Too much. Sometimes that's just what you need to, a little reminder not to take yourself too seriously and have some fun out there. So. It's usually the moment I give up on a boulder, but he can't, of course. He's got to carry on. Right, this high foot brings the arm down and loops it up. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it's a kind of a, a coaching tip. <laughs> right, so he's made this move look really good every time and again. Very good. He seems to be on 45 seconds. He's already got the zone. Every time he does that, I sort of, wow. I 
I'm a bit amazed. It's, it looks wonderful. And goes up with the left hand. A place where he comes regularly to train. So kind of a second home for him here in Japan. Sticking to that toe hook method as well. Ooh, Leading with the left hand. What he usually used to stand on. You can see all the rubber on it above his head. There we go. run up to start with. Alright, let's see. There we go. Leading with the right hand. Very nice. But this next move, very difficult. But he will get the zone and that's shot him up the leaderboard. Started to compete in senior events. Built himself up and I think he just needed a little, little time to build up some confidence. And now, I mean, look, he's qualifying in first place for Boulder Championships. It's impressive. Wow, yeah, making that first move look really oh. easy and this move as well. See if he goes into that shoulder like Meiji did or goes for the hand foot. Wow. Oh, how is that hand on oh, four wow, bumps wow. that was? Oh. Oh. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you said he maybe got a bit excited and it is that feeling. It's like, oh, I can do that move easily. And then when you fall off it a few times, you're like, well, hang on a sec, what's going on here? There we go. Oh. That small lip you talked about, that's not there. Definitely that hold is quite turned, really hard to hold at this angle. 19 seconds to go. The last, the last second. Oh, this time he makes it work. 10 seconds though, keep an eye on the clock. He's not going to have enough time to do this, and he doesn't. Mejdi leading the way with that top. Four attempts to get there, followed by his teammate Paul, and then Serato in third place. Xiongwon, Kokoro, and Hannes van Dyson at the end. That's our top six as we stand. Three boulders to go. Now, we featured this on social media, made by 360. They're dual techs, but not as we've seen them before. Yeah, these guys, they're dual techs. Uh, kind of bubbles stick out of the wall there a little bit, but they have strips of texture kind of sporadically on the holds in different spots. They're not all the same. So uh, that zone hold, that, which is no longer actually the zone hold, but that big one has texture on the left side, I believe, dual text on the right, kind of where the texture is. And from the ground, the athletes would be able to see that, um, depending on the orientation of the hold. But on this particular boulder, you can see where the texture patches are. Now, as you said, the zone has changed on this from that graphic. There's a black nubbin or jib right there. And there's various reasons for that, but mainly because having a large volume-like hold as the zone creates problems because you can crimp the edge of it. Athletes can claim they're using it by just touching it. They could say, you know, I'm moving from position to position. So they've put this black hold in as an extra. Yeah, so this zone, I guess, is acting a little bit more just of a marker to kind of mark that middle of the boulder, the zone hold there. But I wonder if that'll kind of trick the athletes into trying to... Lots of appeals. And we've seen this before. I remember in South Korea last year, there was a sort of a trick zone put in where you didn't really need to use it. It does happen. And that's that dual tech surface. Yeah, this one very much on the feet, about body position. Super different from our last boulder. They'll have to be a lot more relaxed and, and calm on this one. Goro using the zone well, though. It is seeming to help him, so that's good. And now he stretches. <laughs> it's like a hot thing, isn't it? You don't want to touch it. Yeah, it looks like you'll maybe want to reach over with that left hand and stand up from there. Very precarious stand up. Oh, I'm holding my breath watching it. That's why I see, and it's one of those climbs where getting to the very end and then falling is actually quite detrimental because it takes a while to get back there. Definitely, this whole walk across sequence is not something that they'll be able to do super quickly. They do have to, to be very precise there, so we'll see how many attempts the athletes are able to get on this one. Oh, that's better from him though. Looking more confident, but the bubble to see. 
little kids are in the audience and uh, being introduced to our sport, which can only be a good thing. Out he goes again to that zone hold, making it work for him. Bringing the left foot up, gently does it. Very nice work from Dufaro standing up on that left foot. You want to swap here? Oh. Dig to see if he gets this one done. Definitely proved his lap skills earlier today. Yeah, that was amazing. It was the first, well, the only one to do it, as you said. And yeah, go back and watch that. So he's got history on this piece of wall. Oh, thumb on the zone. Ooh, wraps himself around. And the slightest bit of, uh, of kind of uncontrolled little foot twitch or, or pivot is sending them off, it looks like. I want to be very intentional about the way his feet are moving through this section. Looking pretty confident here, though. Trust, definitely trusting that left foot. Right, watch that left foot, that's what it's all about. That looks better. Oh, but that foot match, he almost did in his own toe. He managed to match me, which was where Kokoro struggled. Oh, how did he catch that? Right, one move to go, but it's not the top, now wow. it is. Well, Hannes van Dyson is clearly the six holds are, just in case. Yeah, Mejdi definitely a strong slab climber. Stands up, walking his feet over. Can't really see them because they're so far underneath him. Now looks down for the left. Into the zone. Watch his feet here. Oh. It's the crucial stand up here off the left foot. It's interesting, isn't it? It's like new school holds, but old school slab climbing. You know, this is like everything you, you, you expect from a slab. Delicate maneuvers and, oh, big jump. Wow. For that right side, which I believe is where, where the texture is on this one. It's not so much up top where Mejni tried to grab it. Just, uh... Well, two minutes 11 on the clock. I wonder if, because I mean, he came pretty close on that jump, whether he's thinking, well, I know where the, the friction bit is now, I touched it. I wonder if the head in the hands was, oh, I've made a mistake with the jump, or, oh, I should have got the jump. We'll, we'll find out in a sec, but. So he goes for the wraparound. We'll find out. Ooh. It is quite a slow slab. You've got to take your time on it. Right, so he gets stood up. He's trying to go faster, but can't go too quickly. And in a minute, that buzzer's going to go, and that might unsettle him a bit. There he goes. <laughs> All about the confidence in the feet, this one. There you Stand go. up here. Nice. All right, let's see if he gets that left foot up. Oh. He will. Yes, he does. First with a heel and then more rubber, and now he can stand. And now he'll do... Oh, it looks like he's wanting to jump into it. Oh! Wow! Two out of two. Super strong work from Mejni. He'll be very happy with that. Up again. Had a look at that left foot, just making sure he's standing in the right place. There it is. Rotates the left through. Careful not to stand in your own toes. You can see how little rubber's on it. That's risky with that left like that. He's very close. Yeah, he's opting for that, uh, that full foot on there rather than heel kind of down. It worked well. Let's see if he can get stood up on this left foot. Oh. That foot switch, this is where Kukora lost it. Oh, he does. That was a very dynamic foot swap. I was worried that. And now he'll go, oh! Is your enemy on this and it's ticking away. So up to the starting hold. Stands up, face breast against the slab. In 
Looking it is. Looking good, that left position. Wow. He's so He's confident. Got that wow. Oh. All in the fingertips there as he presses onto that surface. Yeah, he seems to have that start position figured out now. Not looking at the feet, you can't see them through this move. He will be able to in a minute. He can feel the volume, sense it, and now he can look down. You want to not rush too much into that zone hole. You want to stand up into that left foot. A finger ah. on it. That would have counted in the old days, but they changed a couple of years ago, and it's, uh, it's different now. Yeah, he'll have to make some use of that zone. See if he stands up through the left foot a little bit more this time. Still really eyeing down that zone. Let's see if he can reach it. Oh, laser focus. He gets a finger on it. Now he'll stand straight up, I think. If he can move the foot, and he does get the zone on that. Oh. Ooh. And he's got 30 seconds to do it, so this will be the last attempt. Up onto the starting holds. Gets the left. You can see him moving a little bit quicker now. Breathing heavily as he tries to find the right point with his feet completely blind. Oh, look at his eyes. I want to really stand straight up on that left foot. Oh, but he tries to jump again. Yeah, couldn't find the balancing point, couldn't get further left and thought, well, if I can't, if I can't span it, I've got to jump it. But... So Paul is off. Standing up. Oh, wow. Dodges the middle one, but he's going to have to really bump the right. I think he's going to go back, yeah. Just for use of the zone, he kind of pulled on it a little to show that he was moving around. Um, and now he'll come back and, and try to make more progress on the boulder. Couldn't stand on them without a feet, without a handhold. No, that, that panel also, I think, cuts in a little bit there. So they're even worse than they might look on the video. Okay, that foot movement, once again, gets stood up with the left. Now he does what everyone's done, uses the zone again. Most of them get into the zone pretty quickly. Seems to be this next sequence. Very confident in that left foot, stands up get the left foot up again here. Yeah, he's reading this well now. Oh! Wow! Well, he's the only one to have done that like that. <laughs> so Mejdi leading the way. Two tops, followed by Hannes on top in his own. Paul, Serato, Kokoro and Yongwon down the bottom. That is our top six. That's our podium as it stands. Two down. And then, of course, a lot of competition-style boulders, a lot of slab climbing. Um, it's a great place to see, and I think we'll have a lot of athletes coming through town to kind of train there early a little bit. And that'll be a lot of fun for everyone. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to that. But this is the next climb. Fairly easy start according to the route setters, but to my mind, it looked horrible. Tiny little nubbins there. You get to the zone, and then you do this run and jump across the wall towards that hold. So here we go, he pulls on. Just a finger wrapped around that first hole, but into the first of them. You can use the arete there, it's not out. Yeah, this zone move not looks too bad. Okay, really, it's all about this move. That first bit was just a setup for this spectacular run and jump. Midway up this wall, kicking the left foot. Oh, it, it's top section. It does look really awkward to cross like Kokoro just did. So we'll see if they try that or maybe match one of these holds. We'll see. I think we'll, we'll see a lot of people trying this move up here. As you said, the start sequence isn't so bad. Right, swinging with the feet back and forth. Oh. 
But it, it's good, like in any round, to have some variety. We had a pretty powerful first boulder here, and it's cool to see, I think, some coordination being tested on this one. Absolutely right. Here he goes again. That right leg swinging back and forth. All right. Will he try to cross right, left, right again? Yeah. It does. So this easy start, but a bit nasty with the fingers. Oh, we do I say that? And he loses a foot, but managed to catch it. 16 seconds to go. Last chance on this. Wow. It's that finger around the hold. Definitely an awkward start position, but maybe not too, too bad. The feet are quite big. Oh, uses the toe to catch it. Different swing with the legs. It goes way back on this one. Uh, which order they wanted to, to do, whether they wanted to match this first foot or cross the feet through. But it might, it might feel and look a little different once they're in that starting position from the zone. Let's see if he tries to match feet on this final volume again. He does. Good final so far. About halfway through this field, well, two athletes into this uh, third boulder. It's almost like he's trying to stop on that hole. So we'll see if he if he keeps doing that, or maybe kind of launches into the to the right a little bit more. So you'll notice the way he swings his right leg kind of helps him stop on this first position. I think he's trying, he's trying a static approach. Here. Oh. I mean, I, I get what he's thinking there, but I think it's going to be very difficult to stop because there isn't a blocker for the foot. And, and that side pull is, is such a side pull. Yeah, that looks quite hard. I think no matter what way they choose to do it, I think there's probably a few ways that you can make it work, but you've got to move pretty quick. Especially with the feet, I think they need to lead the way here. Look, wow. Oh, well, maybe. Grims are really awkward, or he's getting in his head a little bit here, but he should definitely be able to make this work. That looks, that's looking better. There we go. Not so bad there. Now with the toe broken. I think that will give him... get to the zone here. It has cost him time, though. Time could be a factor on this. Breathes out. So, yeah, kind of doing that arc motion with his foot there. Uh, I mean, you are just wrapping one finger around this tiny little nub. I think definitely uncomfortable for some of the athletes, but makes it work here. Absolutely right, he's got a minute. Takes a big breath. Oh, that was really close. There. She's making those little micro adjustments. Yeah, fully committed. Not going to make this builder work, it seems like. Up he goes this time, but five seconds, he's lit. It's going to be a buzzer beater if he can do it. Oh! oh. You think the, the texture is not all the way to the back of the hold, and they're kind of an interesting little patch there. Makes this work. This last move. Wow. Yes. <laughs> now he brings. Quite a bit harder, but makes that work. All right, so he should get to the zone, which he does. So now he gets an opportunity on this jump, but this could be one and only. Wow. It's interesting that our first few athletes didn't seem to have too much trouble with it, and kind of as we progress through this round, we 
people are struggling a little bit with this first move. Makes it work, though. Then turns it into an undercling, and he's going to stand up, get the toe hook in, and he should be from here okay to the zone. Right, okay. Gives himself more time to figure out the sequence. Wow. Now he's Now rapping. he's trying that undercling. Yeah, the mono undercling method. It just opens well the here. body up a bit and it looks less shouldery. Yeah, in that it allows you to reach up quite a bit more. Let's see what he tries this time. Oh. Wow. Right, Paul's currently in third. That underclean method straight away. Looking a little scrunchy. Makes it work, though. Yeah, straight away through. So, as our first athletes did, flashing it to there and now giving himself lots of time to have a look at this. Oh, you can almost span it. Oh, into the bolt hole. Oh. Not the bolt hole, the, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they had measured that out. Hopefully we'll see a few goes from him. Or he can do it this go right here. That would be pretty neat. That would be pretty cool. I want to see someone do this thing. Right, on to the zone. And let's see what he tries here. Missing that left foot again, barely missing it. If he could get both feet on, I think we would see him progress rightwards through this move a little more. Right, here he goes. Come on, Paul. There we go. Oof. The end there as well, so. A few people trying that. Yeah, Paul has two fourth place finishes, nothing higher than that. So if he stays in this, it will be a PB. Probably one last try on this. Oh, and that's a nasty fall down. He has his 15 seconds left. He might go again. He does. I think it to be super quick, though. It would be pretty spectacular to see something here. Right, one swing. Mechi did the same, remember? Oh! Wow. It was close. Yeah, I think he was in third coming into that boulder, so it's bumped him down a bit. Paul comes up. Well, another start of boulder. Then it looks maybe on camera. Absolutely. Yeah, quite steep. You can see it there. Well, the idea the root setters have is that they face towards the audience they get stood up on those holds and then they jump while still facing the audience into those two slopers that's the idea then into the zone which looks like a jug and it is a jug but it's not like an in-cut jug and then the top, top hold not great either just making that decision and deciding to really commit to a method can be quite hard but he's going to start facing in, yep. pressing up. He might turn around when, once he stood up. Yeah, it looks quite hard to get out of this position. Because the thing is, and you pointed this out, it's all very well to get your hand on it, but you've still got to pull up on it, and there's nothing yeah. for the feet. I can imagine, though, that facing in, they might be able to get both hands on the two black ones, but it'll be quite hard to get up, just because the angle of the wall will kind of push them away. But we'll see how this works here. Well, we said they'd try to break the beta, and he's, he is attempting it here. And he's gonna, he's gonna go for the jump, I think. Oh, no, right, okay. Oh, he is facing out, okay, here we go. So this is way number two. Left out, gets the right in, and he's eyeing up this jump now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, all the way over there. I did see a few of them kind of look like they were miming that out during observation, so I wonder if we'll see a few athletes try that, or if it'll just be 
too far. Faces in again, stretching out with the right. Brings the left foot up and he wants to press, but look at that shoulder angle. And there's nothing for the left foot there, he's just standing on the volume. Wow. In a great position here, the rankings, second place. Yeah, he's really set himself up for a possible podium. Decides to try facing in first. If he manages to place fourth or higher, it will be the best ever male performance by a Belgian athlete in a World Cup in any discipline. Wow. Very young as well, only 18 years. So facing out this time. I have a feeling when they discuss this boulder, they all said, look, you know, we face in, we face out, because it's interesting how they've all tried it the obvious way and then immediately flipped back to the other way, or the two so far anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of assumed you were meant to face out, but so often you're able to maybe find something facing in which works, and it's definitely a little more natural to face in, but definitely going for the face out here. Yeah, kind of aims for that. Definitely like the face out, though, going for that again. Right, up he goes. He gets kind of wadged into this chimney. Now he uses that one. Like you said, there. If someone's able to give that a proper try. It's rare that we get sort of an angle like that as well. You know, usually the wall isn't uh, that severe, a wall almost built into it. Yeah, and it's rare when we get a corner also, I think, to have another panel which is so steep. So it's really making for some interesting climbing. Only Paul can catch him. If he doesn't manage this boulder, but if he does do this boulder, he'll win the competition. Well, there we go. So this could be a goal. Yeah, then it is confirmed on screen. Top in unlimited attempts. He just needs to get it. He is eyeing the jump, and he gets yeah. it. And I wonder if, look, I'm looking at the sofa. Both of them lean forward to check it out. It looks like you are meant to do that, and then kind of jump upwards so that you're in the press that you can move out of. So physical, though, this... He's going to be hanging in the air with his feet if he manages it, and he jumps for the zone. He is facing in again. But this is the thing, you start to question yourself. You're like, well, you know, is it me? Am I just doing it wrong? Do I need to stick with this? And, and he is better on it. And he's going to go for some kind of a jump, maybe. Sets himself up for the zone again. Jumps for the sloper, faces in, blowing the chalk off the hole, right foot on. Oh, so awkward. Now gets stood up. Left palm. Ten seconds. He's just going to jump for the zone. <laughs> he is. He seems set on that right now. So smooth with that right leg. He's looking Seems at the jump. Like he's going for it. Oh. He away. Tries facing in. Needs to establish those two points on each side. Still needs to get that other hand. There we go. So face pressed into the corner. Zerato might try some type of jump here. See, that's, without a foot up, that's an impossible position. He's got to bring the foot up. Sun Jong Wan Chan in this, oh, sorry. On Serato. Last try from Serato here. 30 He's seconds. Come on, Serato. So if we can jump out of this position. He's going to go for the zone. Oh. He's in unlimited attempts, so if he tops it, he'll get that bronze. And he's sitting in last at the moment. Yeah, he would love a top here. Presses into the corner, starting facing in and gets the left on. Oh. 
very blind when you're pressed into the corner like that. You can see trying to look over his shoulder. He's a little taller than Serato looks. If he can reach into the corner a little better in this position. Yeah. He's lining up to jump. Right, he's palming the volume, pressing into it. Doesn't want to pop like he did before. Brings that left foot back in order to be in the correct starting position. Oh, misses the first time. Second time, makes it work with the left toe. Presses his hands back. This will be his last go. Definitely do him good. So, a lot taller. He's palming on the left. Oh, see, that's the, the advantage he's got on this. But look how horrible the shoulders are. He might, if he can bring his foot up. He wants to bring his right foot up to match, I think, but it's super awkward. But yeah, he's got to cut loose his feet. Maybe he can make this. And you know what? He might. He might I mean, be able to try that initial jump. I think he will. What he wants to do is to try that same. Get in that same position facing out. So that's what he's going for. Oh, he is turning. Look at this. So. So he's going to look to kind of jump up and press, face the crowd. Elbow pressing against the wall. Still on his first attempt here. All right, let's see if he jumps maybe straight up. Gets the foot up, maybe? Yeah, that's wow. it. That's what I, I saw him thinking about doing is that right and then a press, but it's wow. a nasty, nasty yeah, move. Yeah, he's so stuck with his uh, right arm. He's going to need to press oh. up somehow. At some point, he's got to go for something. He's going to have to rest. Yeah, drops that hand down. Oh, he touched it. It's tricky for him. So he stands up, facing out towards the crowd once more. Presses up to the palm, quickly into this position. And now, will he cut loose below his feet? Will he hang above the boulder? I just want him to try it, you know. Yeah, I'd love to see one attempt where he just jumps straight there we up. Go. Yeah, just like that. Kind of see. Two points of contact on both sides. There you go. Now he's ready to go. Maybe a last attempt from Paul here. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the clock, 30 seconds. Oh, he's going to go for the zone jump. No, he's not, he's going to go for the press. Here we go. Come on, Paul. Come on. Oh, that's super nasty, but he's okay. He felt close, it seems like. Made of rubber, but I think he thinks that's the way now. Yeah, if he gets the zone, he could at least solidify a second place here. Come on, Paul. Try that again, it would great, be great to just see somebody do this move. Yes, no, oh. that I think. So that is the confirmation of the winners. Mechdi, Hannes and Paul, two French athletes on our podium. Now two Japanese athletes after that. Kokoro and Serato and a young one in sixth position.